What's up guys? Paramoto here. How are you guys doing today? Welcome to Vlog Thursday. Got a little bit of a new scenery for you. We're heading into downtown Raleigh instead of going on our country roads. I'm meeting my girlfriend out for some lunch and I figure I'd bring you guys along for a little Vlog Thursday action. Because you know what they say about Vlog Thursday. It's action packed, that's for sure. <laughs> Got the sniffles. Ooh, this thing's fast. I like it. So guys, I want to take this Vlog Thursday to alert you to a danger that nobody ever talks about, ever, on motor vlogs, is the fact that riding a superbike and also listening to metalcore music is dangerous for your health and safety. I swear to God, so my favorite band ever, my favorite band hands down right now is The Anchor, and it's been The Anchor for probably about three years. Um, it's like a metalcore band that's like local out of uh, Colorado, and uh, to be honest with you guys, like I found them because uh, the lead singer, Lindsey Ray, who has a YouTube channel by the same name, Lindsay Ray. She does like metal kitchen where she'll like literally make some food. You know, I'm gonna make Ratatouille, but it's it's to a metal song. And she'll like just scream, metal scream all of the recipe while she's making it and it's hilarious. Thumbs up. Thumbs up from Jeep Guy. So Jeep Guy gave me the thumbs up. So yeah, literally the anchor has been my favorite band forever and they have just like released a new CD called Through Rose. And it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Every single song, it's like when I listen to it, it's like, boop, repeat. Next song, boop, repeat again. Every song is absolutely fantastic. And you don't really get that from a lot of artists nowadays. You usually get like, maybe between like one and three songs that are really good. Holy crap, that guy almost hit me. Almost turned into me. But like, yeah, you typically you get like one to three songs that are good and the rest are kind of like, meh. These guys just released a, uh, an album that's basically all just, in my mind, hits. But I have, a, I have a strange taste in music, that's for sure. And I just kind of bring that up because I kind of want to know what bands that you guys like that will get you guys in just an unsafe riding mindset and just like you want to just like run on the throttle the whole time. You let me know and I'll go check out that band. I love music. I love music. I love hearing new music and finding new music. Well, I guess it's not so much finding when somebody goes like, here we go, here's some awesome band. Honestly, I would love to know what some of your guys' favorite bands are what you guys like to listen to while you're riding. I have some time to kill right now, so I just figured I'd go the long way and just you know, talk to y'all while these like landscapers just blow leaves in the road because that just gets rid of them, I guess. Dude, dude. Here we are, Glenwood South. Lots of bad decisions in Raleigh are made just right here. Right here. Typically, there's a Lamborghini. I've taken a picture of this bike in front of it, right in front of that building. It's called Alchemy, and it's kind of like a douchey South Beach kind of vibe. But they park a Lamborghini right in front. It's awesome. And not like any Lamborghini, not like a Gallardo, not like any throwback Lamborghini, like an Inventador. When you see an Inventador on the streets, man, it's, it's something to take notice for, you know? This bike still makes me feel like I own an Inventador, like for real. I still can't get over that I own this bike. I've been like idolizing Ducati for like so long and I actually own one now and it's just, it's still amazing. So I kind of want to just make an old school moto vlog. This kind of reminds me of like a video where uh, I think it was Baron Von Grumble who is still one of my absolute favorite moto vloggers. Baron Von Grumble went out and he was like, it was like basically like his lunch trip from work to go get like a cheeseburger and everything. I loved it. I love those kind of videos or like the video where like he was like a grown man trying to go find Puss in Boots, the movie. And it's like, really? Really? You're a grown man going to find a, a Disney movie. You're like, come on. I think it was before he had his kid too, so it's like you got no excuse. Like when you have a kid, you could be like, oh yeah, I just want to go all, do all these like, you know, immature things because my kid will like it. And then it's just like, no, you, you don't have a kid. You're, you don't have that excuse just yet. <laughs> man, they just keep building here, man. They're going to build on every square inch that they possibly can. I swear to God, like this much room opens up in Raleigh and they're just like, oh, I wonder how we can figure out how to put an apartment building here. Charge $2,000 a month. I feel a moment of silence coming on for all of my northerners, such as Motorbike Mike. It's 55 degrees out here and it's like November 20 something. I'm sorry guys. If you feel like coming down to North Carolina, I have a WR250X that I'll be more than happy to swap onto road tires and let you guys ride if you need to warm up. Moment of silence. Moment of silence for all our northern motorcycle friends. Watch out for the baby guy. Well, that's perfect because now I can go around them. We have like three tall buildings here. I don't even think they count as skyscrapers. They're not even like as big as like the normal buildings from like bigger cities like Chicago and stuff like that. 
They're just like normal sized tall buildings. There's like nothing to write home about at all. We are literally heading to my old neighborhood. When I used to live down here, and like you got gentrification going on all over the place. It's like $300,000 tiny condos and then like across the street, you got a bunch of blood gang members slinging dope, you know? It's crazy. When I lived down here, I wouldn't go anywhere without a gun. I wouldn't answer my front door without a gun because there would be people in the middle, in like the literally middle of the night. People would knock on my door when I used to live down here looking for drugs. It's like, you came to the wrong house, dude. Like the only house on this block where you could get drugs at, you know? <laughs> but that's what happens when you move to a new city. You don't know anything, you know? You just gotta appreciate it. You gotta, you know, you gotta appreciate. You gotta, you know, just adapt and overcome. That's the name of the game, adapt and overcome. Like. There's cars going like either side and like they can't see you or they don't pay attention. We'll just start calling that like a guillotine traffic hazard. I have to cross this guillotine here. Oh, and I made it. I'll tell you one thing. It was interesting living down here. Like, I mean, it was gunshots on the regular. I don't think people were really getting shot though. I mean, I think it was just people literally just popping their guns off in the air. This whole gas station got shot up one night with like rifle fire. And I used to live literally two streets down. Literally a stray round from that could have hit my house. Like I was that close. But I had to miss a whole bunch of other things, but it could have had the gusto behind it. It's looking like they're actually putting some stuff in though and trying to make it look a little bit nicer. Nice, sir. It's actually kind of surprising. I still wouldn't stop down here for anything. I would not stop down here for a single thing. You couldn't pay me enough. In fact, I, I probably feel like it's probably stupid to even, you know, ride down here on a motorcycle. And then you got this guy who's just riding around in a car without a license plate. Whatever, you know, no license plate, nothing in the window. You know, we just do whatever we want down here. You know, there's no rules. You gotta fucking love it, man. Amazing some of these places that would be like, you know, huge giant houses and then it's like right next to like a drug dealer house it's so eclectic that's probably the first time anyone has talked about southeast raleigh as as being eclectic <laughs> but hey you know you know i'm just i'm nice i'm nice i'm a nice person all right guys i feel a need to talk about this certain subject that's huge okay i'm a huge football fan namely i'm a Cle cleveland browns fan like i've always been a, a cleveland browns fan even when they've been like 0-16, oh, 1-15, I'm still a Cleveland Browns fan, right? And the huge news going on with the Cleveland Browns is the whole Miles Garrett, Mason Rudolph helmet hit, right? And it's like, I feel the need to actually chime in on this, okay? And being a Cleveland Browns fan, you obviously know which side I, I'm, I'm on, you know? I'm on the Cleveland Browns side, 100%. If you actually, like, watch the video and you break down the video, like, almost like a, like a shooting video, like a step-by-step, -step, you know, move my move breakdown, you'll see that Mason Rudolph is absolutely 100% the aggressor in this case. And I'm gonna go through it. I'm gonna 100% go through it and make sure that you guys hear my point out. And you can disagree with me if you like, I don't mind, whatever. The entire shenanigans started when Mason Rudolph got sacked by Miles Garrett. There was a clean hit, no flags, nothing. Like it was a clean hit. While on the ground, Mason, Ger Mason Rudolph decides to pull off, or attempt to pull off, I should say, Miles Garrett's helmet. He fails. He totally fails. And then when Miles Garrett gets up, Mason Rudolph puts a cleat in his crotch. I don't know if it was a kick in the nuts or if it was just a cleat in the crotch. Either way, I think that's a very aggressive motion. Miles Garrett ends up taking a pretty profound exception to that. And what he decides to do is do what Mason Rudolph was trying to do in the first place. And that's pull off his helmet. Only Miles Garrett was actually able to do so instead of, you know, little weenie Mason Rudolph. Miles Garrett rips his helmet off of him. Just with just with profound prejudice. Just you know, like drags him by the head a couple of times and then pulls it right off. <laughs> I totally got pulled over right here one day. Ah, good memories. Note to self, don't go 55 into 35. When Raleigh Police is looking for a red motorcycle, that's running from at the time I had a red motorcycle. After Miles Garrett rips off Mason Rudolph's helmet, all hell breaks loose, right? Literally all hell breaks loose after Miles Garrett rips off Mason Ru Rudolph's helmet, right? So, like Clancy Pouncey jumps on him, a couple other Steeler guys jump on him, Mason Rudolph gets up off of his back and jumps up and puts his hands, he puts his hands on Miles Garrett's neck. Then and only then is when Miles Garrett took the helmet and swung it and hit him in the head with it. Which I think is perfectly acceptable, to be totally honest with you. Because honestly, Miles Garrett didn't even hit him that hard. He hit him just hard enough where like he tapped him with the like back edge of the helmet. And then the first thing Mason Rudolph does is turn to the ref and go, Whoa, you gonna do anything about that? It's like it, you're such I'm sorry, I'm trying not to I'm trying not to swear in my vlogs, but Mason Rudolph was such a little bitch. Such a little bitch about it. 
You know, like, who instigates a fight and then literally goes, Oh, the rest are going to do anything about that? Please be a man about it. If you started a fight and somebody else finished it, just accept it, dude. Just accept it, right? He doesn't. And he gets popped in the head and then Clancy, like, basically is like, I think it's like Clancy or Pouncy, Clancy Pouncy, whatever his name is, starts basically punching Garrett and kicking Garrett in the helmet and stuff like that. And he gets a one-game suspension. This is the guy that was literally just defending himself from being strangled. Look at Rudolph's face when he gets up off the ground. Like, he's just, like, enraged. Like, he's just not reasonable at all. And, like, I'll be totally honest with you. I don't think it's okay, in any case, to take a helmet off another player and hit him with it. But I'll be totally honest with you. In that case, I'm totally okay with it. You had, like, a bunch of dudes surrounding you. There was almost nobody backing you up at that point. You're getting punched and kicked and strangled, and you just decided to defend yourself with other players' helmet. Personally, I don't think that's despicable. I think that's resourceful. But that's only my personal opinion. You guys come up with your own. But, like, it's just crazy how, like, the national news media is just picking it up and just, like, despicable acts by Miles Garrett. It's like, Miles Garrett is a class act. Like, if you follow his off, like, off-field antics and stuff, Miles Garrett is literally a class act. You know, and he has, like, one slip-up, one mess-up, and he's just, like, thrown to the wolves, indefinite suspension. I just don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair at all. What are you excited about tonight, guys? Me and the girl are going to have a fire outside and have some Christmas ale because Christmas ale came out. Best seasonal beer is Great Lakes Christmas ale. And I'm going to light a fire and uh, basically cook some hot dogs and drink a bunch of it tonight. So I am super excited. I love having fires outside. It's going to be warm-ish. It's not going to be freezing cold. I'll, I'll say that. It's going to be cold, but it's not going to be freezing cold. So that's why we're having a fire. Man, I cannot tell you guys how much I miss riding this motorcycle around. Okay, so, so you northerners get it that, that do wintertime and stuff, but the weather here has been rainy and cold. Can't make a vlog. My girlfriend's off work and she always wants to do stuff when she's off work. So I haven't really been able to ride and like finally I'm able to ride. I'm just, I'm just in such a good mood right now. So guys, I just want, uh, you know, to the people that hang out all the way to the end, throw me a, throw me a comment down below. Let me know that you're hanging out all the way to the end because I wanted to save this morsel for you guys, like my hardcore dudes, my, you know, my Cameron Sims and everybody like that, dudes. So look forward to the R1 review probably sometime next week. Um, first ride and review of a Yamaha R1 2016 um, that will be happening probably next week. So if you guys have been looking forward to that, you like you guys like seeing reviews of super bikes, that's coming out next week, guys. So other than that, I think uh, this vlog is pretty much wrapped up. About to pull into the place where I'm meeting my girl now. Whenever I get a free area to ride. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Deuces.